Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what we are going to be talking about is video editing. Out of everything I do here on YouTube, probably my favorite aspect is the post-production. Uh, I've been messing around with video editors for some time. Uh, I remember back when it first came out, I used uh, Camtasia Studio quite a bit. And then as I got into high school and took video production classes, I went and used Adobe Premiere Pro for quite a while, uh, particularly uh, CS4 and CS5. But as I've slowly migrated over to Linux over the past two or three years or so, I have switched to video editors that run natively on Linux. And after playing around for a little bit of them a couple years ago, I finally settled on Caden Live as my video editor of choice. Uh, but Recently, I, I just can't use it anymore. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is talk about first what I do like about it, so I'm gonna give it some uh, credit here. Uh, I'm gonna talk about why it's becoming borderline unusable for me, for my use case. And then I'm gonna talk about a little bit what I'm replacing it with, which is DaVinci Resolve. So first of all, what is Caden Live? Uh, Caden Live is a Libre video editor, so it is completely free and open source. And it will allow you to do basically any basic editing you need to do, uh, clipping things together, applying effects, doing basic color correction, uh, adding graphics, doing keyframe animations overall. It, it's a pretty good video editor. Now in other videos I've talked about Caden Live being my favorite video editor and that is primarily because it mimics a lot of the features of Adobe Premiere Pro, which I've come over from, primarily the keyframing features and all that. In Caden Live, keyframing is awesome, especially for something that's free and open source. But one thing with me is, unlike a lot of people in the Linux community, free and open source isn't the number one priority with the software that I use. It's definitely up there on the priority list. I definitely prefer free and open software. But my number one priority with editing videos or anything like that is one, what tool is gonna to be the most efficient to use and what out there is going to go ahead and produce the best content. Now, when it comes to the free and open source priority, I want to use Linux. I'm in Linux, it's my primary environment that I stay in. So I need a video editor that's gonna work natively in Linux. And luckily DaVinci Resolve is a very professional video editor that does work natively in Linux. But I'm gonna get into that in just a sec. First, what we're gonna do, this is the Caden Live page. Now, I kinda of talked about some of the things that I do like about it, and now I'm gonna get into some of the things that I really do not like about Caden Live. And first of all, if we go down here, let's just go to Bug Reports and go to the KDE Bug Tracker. Now, look at this list here. These are all the bugs in Caden Live that are currently known of or that people are aware of. And I've, over the last couple months or so, have really been experiencing some of those. I'll go ahead and pull up a clip real quick here. One of the things that happens is I do a lot of cuts in my video. And when I cut a clip and put two clips together, there's a really nasty audio clipping effect. It's uh, kind of discouraging. So about a week after using... So about a week... So about a week after using... So you heard that kind of high screech when it, the playhead went over that, and that happens all the time. And then the only way to fix it is to like zoom all the way in and add like uh, fade in and fade out to the audio for a couple frames and that will get rid of it. But that is okay. so about extremely redundant. And for me, I'm not the best at talking for long periods so of time, so I have to cut constantly. And I end up having to do that quite a bit. Now, one thing that I'm gonna do real quick here is actually mimic one of the issues that I happen to come across. So let's go ahead and fire up Caden Live, and this is something that I can just go ahead and mimic on the fly. So let's go into my files, <laughs> let's go into uh, videos, let's go, let's say we want the next cloud setup, and let's do the, the node login, and then credits. So one thing that I need to do is add transitions. So like slide effects, things like that. And it would be very nice if I was actually able to, here, let's go ahead and get rid of this audio so it doesn't, you don't hear it. And here are my credits. This is for YouTube members and Patreon supporters. By the way, thank you guys oh so very much. 
And uh, what I'm gonna do real quick is kind of do what I usually do. Let's go over to effects, transform, transform, and let's throw this over to the side. See, overall, this is a good video editor. The UI is amazing. The tools are in places that are easy to get to. It, it functions very well in general. But let's say I want to apply this effect here and I want it to slide in like how I usually do. So to do that, you'd go to composition, slide, drop that in there. And now when I apply the slide effect, you can already see what's going on there. When I play through, you can kind of see that glitch effect through the slide, go across the video. And as this comes in, it goes away. And that happens no matter what. I was able just to mimic it on the fly here. And that happens, like let's say I wanna drop the size down a bit. And sometimes that fixes it. So you see that fixed it. So if I make it so it's not touching the edges of the frame, that doesn't happen. But that's just one little effect. And it really sucks, especially if you don't notice that. You do this whole project, you render it out, you upload it to YouTube. And then you see these little artifacts or glitches in your video from Caden Live. It is incredibly annoying. And it's just not really a professional look. It's not what you want in your videos. And another little something, I can't really mimic it because this is more rare, but when it does happen, it's absolutely brutal. Uh, sometimes like that effect I just applied, having a picture over with a slide, sometimes Caden Live has a render, render issue where that segment of the video that has an effect or some picture over or something will just be completely blacked out when you render it out. And if you have a 2K, 4K video, you render that out, it takes 45 minutes to render, even on a good modern computer like I have. And then you play it back and you see just a black screen for five seconds. It really sucks. And you don't want to like slightly edit it to try to make it right, because then you'll do a slight edit, but it'll still be ruined. So you wasted another 45 minutes. And so I just end up deleting the effect. And then since that effect's not there, my video is just slightly worse than it could have been. Now I know one thing that I'm even going to knock myself for is I'm right now I'm really complaining about something that is free. It's free. Nobody said I had to use it. I didn't pay money for it. So it's, I don't really have a right to complain too much about it because of its free and open source nature. But at the same time, I'm just being honest with the work I do and what I can and can't use. And from there, that takes us to DaVinci Resolve. From an editing standpoint, it is absolutely magnificent. But the problem with DaVinci Resolve, it, it it's not free and open source. It is free technically, but it's not free as in freedom, free as an open source. It's a locked down code. And because of that, actually getting it to run on Linux is not the easiest thing to do. Uh, it has native support for Red Hat, Linux, and CentOS, but even when I was running Fedora, I had issues, and that primarily has to do with the fact I'm running an AMD GPU. The hardware acceleration in DaVinci Resolve is primarily GPU-based, so if your operating system and the software is not able to properly communicate with your GPU, it's just not going to run. It won't open, you'll have uh, black screen glitches, things like that. It's not good overall. Now, if I had a NVIDIA card, which is weird saying for a Linux ecosystem, if I had a <laughs> NVIDIA card, it would probably run a lot better on things like Red Hat Linux, Open, uh, not OpenSUSE, uh, CentOS, things like that. The only way I was able to get uh, DaVinci Resolve to work was installing it on an Arch-based system because there's a really good uh, Arch wiki on getting it to work, getting the AMD Pro drivers from the Arch user repositories and using a special command to open up DaVinci Resolve, and that's what finally got it to work. So on my computer here, I can kind of show you what I had to do. If I go over to my keyboard settings, because if I go ahead and just open DaVinci Resolve through here, it, it's not going to open up because it's not using those AMD Pro drivers to open. So what I had to do is create a custom keyboard shortcut and I could open it through the terminal as well, but this is significantly easier. Go to custom shortcuts and you see I have a resolve open with AMD Pro Super R. 
and that's open with the pro gl and then the location of the actual program so you have to use pro gl to go ahead and open this up if you're on a amd driver and i had to install the actual software through the aur and do a couple other things to get it to work if you're interested i can upload a whole separate video on how to actually get the software working because it's technically Linux native, but it's really not because it requires a little bit of leg work to actually get it to work, depending on your hardware, depending on your Linux distribution and all of that. And in DaVinci Resolve, that's not really the only negative. Uh, another negative is the codec support. If you're using the free version, uh, you have to use MOV files with a very custom codec. If I go over here, go into my uh, videos folder, you can see Right here, I have a folder called convert. I have to convert all the media I create into the proper format before I could even put it into the software. If I go in here, you can see I have an MP4 SH file and an MKV SH file. If I go ahead and open this, for example, open in text editor, you can see I have to use an FFmpeg command and do a custom codec to convert it into an MOV file to even get it to run. And then the problem comes with the size of those MOV files. Uh, do I have it transcoded? No, I don't, but I can show you right here. This original screen recording of Zorn is uh, 191 megabytes. And then if I go back to videos and I go to that Zorn release project, this is that same footage, but transcoded. And this is 64.2 gigabytes. So that is definitely an issue and because of that, I'm probably eventually down the road going to end up purchasing the uh, Pro version, which is like $300 of DaVinci Resolve. But because you're paying for the license, they're able to add additional codecs that they had to pay licensing fees for and things like that. So that's when you get access to be able to do just regular MOV, MKV files and things like that. So now that I talked about the negatives, I'm going to go ahead and fire up DaVinci Resolve real quick using that custom hotkey I just showed you guys and show you why I'm actually switching to it. So here I have the three projects that I've created so far on this machine. I used DaVinci Resolve for a little bit on Fedora, but it didn't, it, I, I had issues reinstalling it after I tried to uh, switch distributions. So I just switched to Arch, and these are the three that I made so far running Endeavor OS. So for example, let's go ahead and go to this next cloud setup project here. And this was a bigger project, took a lot of work to do. Uh, if I go ahead and zoom out here, you can kind of see what's going on. Overall, the UI is absolutely beautiful. And one of the things I really like it is their setup with their pages and how the overall organization works. So if I go down here, you can see I have media. So this is my media bin. I have a separate cut page. And for me, this is absolutely critical because like I was mentioning earlier with Caden Live and how their little cut issue with the audio is, I cut a lot. And you can see this throughout this video. These are all my cuts throughout the video. And this cut page is magnificent because it will wanna show you your entire timeline here and it will show you the zoomed in view here. So when I would do this in Caden Live, I would just play it and I would pause it and I would do cuts where it needed and I'd go all the way through. But with this, I could go ahead and shuffle through fairly quick find what I need to cut, use a hotkey, control B, control B, delete, and I can see everything that's going on on the project. I can see how close I am to being done with the cuts and everything like that. Overall, this page for me is an absolute game changer. And then of course we have our edit page right here. So we have all of our different edits and the actual audio and everything in here. So if I go ahead let's zoom out a bit so we could go to something with an actual effect. Like right here, there's a blur effect applied because there's some uh, MySQL database passwords right there. And here we have our uh, graphic that slides in there with absolutely no issues or bugs at all. And another thing that I like about this is there's a lot more predefined transitions, titles, and things like that. You might have seen this title popping up a little bit more in my videos here and there. And that is just one of the pre-installed titles within DaVinci Resolve. So if I go over to titles, and I go to, I think it's the simple clean. So yeah, this title right here, that is what I've been using and it's already in there. And it's really easy to just go ahead and add these. So if I wanted the title there, I'd click on it. Over here in your inspector window, you can change all the text. You can go through the settings and change where it's displayed and all that. 
There's keyframing controls, which by the way, the keyframing controls in this is ap it's just magnificent compared to Caden Live, and even compared to something like Adobe Premiere Pro. If I go ahead and zoom in here, and let's say I wanted just to uh, zoom in on something. So all I would do, make sure the clip is selected, add the keyframe that I would like, and let's say I just wanted to go to about here and have it zoom in a little bit. That's, that's really it. That's all I would need to do. So it would do that zoom. But one thing that's awesome is if I go over here, click down, and then open up this window, I have even more control of these keyframe effects. So I can make smooth it out and make it a lot more natural shot. So for example, I could go ahead and add a bend there, add a bend there, and then when I go ahead and do this zoom effect, you could see it's much more of a smooth zoom and it's a lot less sudden and choppy. So the fact you can really manipulate and check out what's going with your keyframes in this additional little window down here under the actual clip in the edit panel is beautiful. Again, there's more things like Fusion. I'm still learning how to do everything in Fusion, but it's a node-based tool to go ahead and add more enhanced effects. The only thing I've done to actually uh, be able to demonstrate that in this specific project is that a uh, blur effect. So if I go ahead and go, um, let's click on it, click on the adjustment, go over to Fusion, you could see I have the media in, blur, rectangle one, and media out. Additionally, there's magnificent color control. So some of these, I believe, no, I didn't do any color corrections in this project, but this is another thing I'm still learning. So you can really easily edit the curves and make your uh, coloring look absolutely beautiful. So let's say I wanted this to be a little bit more blue and I could play it and then you could see the color effect that I kind of applied to it there. And then we have Fairlight, which this is the audio editor. It's another thing I'm not really used to using yet. I've just used this to bump up certain audio levels on some clips where I turn away from the mic for a second. And then we have Deliver. And this works perfectly fine, but the codec is the DNxHD QuickTime, which creates huge, absolutely ginormous uh, <laughs> video files. So I believe this file, it ended up being, how long is this actual project? It is about... 10 minutes, 10, 11 minutes. And it, uh, I think it was 50, 56 gigabytes was the actual download size. So there's definitely some cons to it. But as I mentioned earlier, my main focus is what is going to produce the best looking video content. Uh, what will I be able to use easiest, quickest, and most efficient to make decent content. And compared to Caden Live, for now, DaVinci Resolve is going to be what I use going forward. So with all of that said, if you're interested in an actual step-by-step -step tutorial on getting DaVinci Resolve to work, if you have a situation like me with those AMD uh, graphics drivers and between different distributions and things like that, uh, let me know down below because I'm more than, more than willing to make that. But with all that said, I would like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino as the top tier executive level supporter. Thank you so much. Additionally, we have a couple producers, which is another pretty high tier support level. Uh, Timo, Anthony, Phil, Mac, and Kyle. Thank you all so much for your support. And big thank you to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members that you can see on the screen now. The support is truly humbling, and it means the world to me. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, there will be links down below, or if you join through YouTube, you get additional emojis and badges and uh, cool things like that. Um, if you don't feel like doing that, a simple subscribe and ringing that bell so you do not miss any future content is good enough with me. With that said, have a beautiful day, and goodbye.